Cut the Check podcast brought to you by Craft Farmer, bringing you weekly motivation, unmatched cultivation tech, and telling you some badass war stories along the way. So we see recently, right, um, you just signed a deal with Athena. Yeah. Why, why Athena? And I wouldn't even say like it's a deal. Like I didn't like sign a deal with Athena. Yeah. I, I knew that um, it was only a matter of time before like I worked with Athena and I put that out like in the universe a long, long time ago, like well over a year ago. But everything that I do, I don't want to like force in, I don't want to force an issue. I don't want to force something to happen. Like everything that I'm doing at this point in my life, I want it to be very organic. Mm-hmm. And I knew that it was only a matter of time before I got together with Athena, however it was, wherever it was, you know, and that's exactly what happened. Did the Jungle, Bo- Jungle Boys play a role in that? Jungle no? Boys, I don't think Jungle Boys played any fucking role in that. I think um, more importantly than anyone, uh, my buddy Dylan, Mitten Master, played the biggest part of that. Mm-hmm. You know, he finally just really called me one time. It was like, man, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like... You need to be on this team. Like we can, we can do this together. And it was a no fucking brainer. I love the guy, and I, uh, I enjoy all of our conversation. And then just the fact that we would get to work together on a professional level just got me excited. And and before all that, the fucking nutrients crushed it for me. You know, I was going through a transition period where I was having a, a ton of issues with my previous nutrient line that I was running, front row ag. They can say whatever the fuck they want, but. I had a lot of problems mm-hmm. with it and I was open about it and I talked to them behind the scenes and we just had a different view on how to address these issues like where they wanted to remain quiet and not say mm-hmm. anything and I wanted to come out and address everybody and yeah. it was just dude it was the you right You want to go and educate people because that's your that's your tendency. I'm selling the nutrients like I need to educate yeah. the consumers and if you're not going to get behind me like I'm going to fucking go on this campaign and, and share this information. Like everything I do, I feel compelled to share the information and be truthful. Like I'm not the dude sitting at a hydro store just selling you whatever the fuck. Like when you look at my store and what I sell, it's very specific items that I personally use and do really well with. That's it. There's not choice. It's just what you see in my gardens. And so I had an issue and I felt compelled you know, and I was just totally done with having problems and it was affecting my life in a negative way and not allowing me to grow. And I started using Athena and came out the fucking gr- gate and hit a triple my first at bat and crushed it and haven't looked back. I, was, cred- was, I mean, credibility, right? It was affecting credibility, which you, you Dude, are. and that's what we need at this level. Yeah. When you have hundreds of lights and you're trying to expand and, and do other shit and help people. And like, if I'm going to tell you to do something, like I need to know that whatever I'm suggesting to you or telling you to do is going to work. And like, it works with Athena. You know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. regardless of Jungle Boys. Um, and I don't mean to like say that because I, I know that. Like, for sure. Yeah, like it's, it, it's I think today it says something that they're, kind of part of the same lineage because oh, jungle boys and i mean yeah. like ivan fucked with me heavily before yeah. i even used athena and that just goes to show you how amazing he is and how he doesn't give a fuck like he doesn't get all wrapped up in all this bullshit that mm-hmm. all these fucking peons get wrapped up with and waste their energy with like that's a real motherfucker right there he doesn't care what lights you use what nutrients you use you grow good flower like we'll fuck with you absolutely you know and so um and then honestly you know i've just been um from them as a company and seeing what like Brandon's created and what they've done together, him and Ivan. And like, it's fucking inspiring. How can you not? And like, dude, I want to, I want to do big shit and I need to align myself with people that fucking motivate me. And as you start crushing it and doing really well in life and you start seeing yourself fucking take off, like your, your circle of people that motivate you start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You know what I mean? And there's, there's few people out there who are really 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 crushing it that motivate me and and their company was, was one of them absolutely absolutely and what was the other f- company's name like the one that what was that fertilizer name the front row front row well front row they fucked up big time because <laughs> you literally are not because the thing about this right when we talk about like the consultant i just felt kind of isolated number. from them from the beginning yeah. like yeah. as much as like I didn't feel like I got help from them. I feel like they were kind of like using me to try to get notor- notoriety and more business. But like I didn't just, I didn't feel like they were doing anything for me. You know what I'm saying? Like 
I was just I was having issues with the fertilizer which was holding me back as a cultivator yeah. and they weren't doing anything for like craft farmer to build craft farmer it wasn't a it wasn't a mutual beneficial relationship so I'm the first to tell you I trim the fucking fat like if if you're not going to be aiding me or helping my growth or doing anything you're fucking gone I'm just going I'm going to trim the fucking fat it's that simple yeah your consumers come first your credibility comes first absolutely um and it's crazy because, like, you know. And there's some fallout because of that and drama, but this industry is full of that it's drama. It's full of that shit, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, the, the end of the day, I hurt some people's feelings and they really didn't like it. Instead of them being able to look at it like human beings and be like, okay, that's what's best for Lance, that's what's best for Kraft Farmer, they look at it selfishly and say, fuck him and he did this and he used this. Fuck all that. Yeah. I'm better off with these people and I'm getting better results so that's better for Lance Guyon and better for Kraft Farmer yeah. and anyone out there who's like oh I don't do this for me you're stupid <laughs> if you're not you're out also there you're lying to people too like let's be honest come on don't like I mean like you do it you you do it to give you great customer service because in return you're going to be able to I need to sell shit I don't have a problem with yeah absolutely and that's the reality of that I'm not going to push product that I'm fucking constantly dealing with dealing with warranties and refunds and unhappy people and trying to explain myself and just yeah. fucking over that. Like yeah. first and foremost, I'm not some grocery store. I'm a fucking cultivator. I'm a real person. I'm in the trenches every fucking day and I just have a store that organically came about. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? First and foremost, I grow every day. So now I have this commitment to the industry and to all my customers and to all these people that follow my advice that I need to be able to give them good advice and shit that actually works and Absolutely. not have problems. Absolutely. And that's how I ended up with fucking Athena and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. And you're a cultivator first, but it's like I've seen recently that like you've now, I mean, I th you're the top of the list of like the consultant or the, like how would you, because now you have like, Let's jump, I guess, with the Patreon stuff. No, we, we talked, you know, we talked a little bit about that. But like, what? Why did you go into the Patreon? The Patreon was a recommendation by a random follower. A random follower reached out to me and was like, "Man, you're giving out so much information. I've learned so much from you. You've changed my life. I think you should open a Patreon, and I'll fucking contribute to it just for what you've done for me." And I started the fucking Patreon. Yeah. That's what caught my eyes when I saw that. I did my research and I was like, "That's very dope." That's that's because the amount of scale. information though in the Patreon, the Patreon is so fucking underrated. I see some people every once in a while like making a comment, and be like, "Oh, anyone who pays for this is a Chad." You're a dumb motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> anyone out there who thinks that I'm ripping somebody off or that people aren't getting their value for the Patreon, you are the stupidest people out there. You are the fucking brainless zombies that walk this earth. The amount of information on the Patreon is incredible and I would have paid for it a million times over in my life. It's just, it's in invaluable. Like yeah. for what it costs, it's fucking nothing. It's, it's, you made the thousands of mistakes to learn all that, right? 20 no years. One, yeah. yeah, for sure. And I'm yeah. still putting shit out there that I'm changing people's lives. It's that simple. Absolutely. Like, and I didn't make up the tech, but I do a very, very good job helping people understand it that don't understand it. I'm basically like think of myself as a, um, as a translator. I can take super technical information that a lot of people can't and I can dummy it down and share it with mm -hmm. you in a very with easy the masses or with just in, you know, and that's why my installation videos and shit are so simple and things are so easy I make it very easy I, I break it down on a level that I need to understand it at mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and it's yeah it's been um, when did you start the patreon again March of 2020 I think so. Like for all like the March, fuckheads April. that are saying that, why are the people still staying? Why are you and getting I mean, more and more and more? You know, it's. I mean, when you it's look just, at the pages just, of yeah. people say shit, I mean, it's just your typical jealousy shit. They look at how much money it means I means you're on the right path. Yeah, it means you're successful. I mean, it's like, not. It's not hard to fucking know. I charge mm -hmm. two fifty a month for the Patreon. If there's a hundred and thirty people there, do the fucking math. Mm -hmm. I'm making money, but like I'm spending a lot of money too. Like who else is putting out the information that I'm putting out? Who else? on like that super, you know, 
Tell me one other fucking person that has canopies like I do, who crushes as hard as I do, who goes and works in a shop, packs orders, sends you fucking kits, and their gardens actually are crushing it as elite as mine. Fuck it. Tell me another person whose gardens crush it as elite, uh, on an elite level like mine, and they're not sharing the information. Not very many. No. Like, it's that simple. Look at my gardens, and then look at all my peers. Absolutely. It is what it is. Like, mm. like I don't need any fucking gratification for mm. anyone else. I'm my biggest fucking fan. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I'm my own competition. Mm. I, I know what I put out is legit. Mm. So I don't, I don't fucking hear no noise. Yeah. And I'm going to collect my paycheck. I've been collecting yeah. paychecks my whole fucking life without anyone's help. And that's never going to mm. fucking stop. My paychecks are only going to get bigger. They yeah, definitely are. They definitely are. Yeah, I um, I think it was just so. Let's. I'm curious about the whip kit. So, you came like you know you didn't necessarily come up with it, but you're the one who really brought it to mainstream or like the like the masses, right? I mean, they've always been making water delivery. Mm -hmm. They've never quite done it like I did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They like, simplified the, the, the explanation of it. They had all the IP to explain it in depth. And yeah, people have been kit. making... Wait, like, what did you say? What was the water... Water delivery system. Yeah. So awesome people rig. have always been making some kind of rig or a solenoid and a shutoff valve and this shit, but like, I just wanted to simplify it for everybody out there. And like, the biggest thing about those kits is it's one pipe run. It's from one pipe from your pump, from your dosers, from mm -hmm. your tank into your room. And then you manifold it in your room and then you have a zone. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of redundancy in it. And I just don't see a better way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not opposed to it, but like, there's nothing else out there in our industry that was in a kit and made available. You'd have to go get your parts. People would have shitty ass Bundle Home Depot mm. parts and this and that. You got fucking clowns out there knocking it off saying, oh, don't, you know, it's too expensive. And they go spend $200 instead of $350 and have all their shitty Home Depot parts. And their rooms are flooded and they have fucking, you know, plywood tables and they're, you know, they're your Stupid. typical just dudes at home knocking your shit off trying to tell people like oh it's not worth it it's worth it it's, it's that simple it, yeah. you don't want to buy it don't buy yeah. it yeah but it's bundled it's consistent i made it super easy this is exactly. how easy i made it mm -hmm. i it was never my intention to sell the whip kit mm -hmm. i was inundated with people requesting it and the day that i decided to sell it and i made a fucking story i did a well, how long does the story last 24 hours yeah. i put a story on my account maybe a thousand people saw the story, mm -hmm. and by the end of the weekend, I had sixty thousand dollars in my account of pre-ordered whip kits. The market told you. The mar The people told me. People's chance. The people told me to fucking start a Patreon. The people told me to build the whip kits. The people told me to make other whip kits. The people told me to fucking take their phone calls and help them with consultations. Everything I do, people request. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a, just another inch. I mean, it's. If you think about it from a business standpoint, it's kind of common sense, but no one, a lot of people don't do that. They don't listen to the market. They don't listen to their people. For they sure. They don't, you know, take the feedback. But um, I think it's brilliant. Are there other types of bundles or other types of products, you know, potentially you guys are going to offer? You just want to focus, hyper-focus on? I mean, we've seen it. I mean, like I started out with a whip kit and mm -hmm. then I did the manifold yeah. kit and then I did the pump tank filter mm -hmm. kit, all super hot sellers. Mm -hmm. I introduced the Dosatron kit this fucking year. Dostron's been sold by everybody all over and I've done over a hundred thousand dollars in those in a few months. Like I think I just do things differently. Ian and I are about to drop a video of us hand assembling the dosage. Like mm -hmm. where can you go see that? I've always been intimidated by it and not wanting to do it because the skids so over fucking so mm -hmm. expensive or not knowing to hook it up. Like I just show and show people and inspire them to do this shit themselves versus fucking just forking out all the money and and paying these fucking cannabis taxes for getting work done you know what i mean like that's what it came down to is inspiring people to do their own installations to build their own things to do their own work and know what goes into it and how to problem solve it when it does all the shit i do is in, is is all inspired based if I didn't have Craft Farm or if I didn't have whip kits, I'd still be making money. Mm -hmm. I've always made fucking money. I'd just be doing something else. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Well, you'd always be serving the people. You'd be serving customers. And then from there, build out. I've been products. hustling, selling yeah. shit for my yeah. whole life. Yeah. And I just finally had something that kind of went poof. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not about being at the, the right place and the right time and, 
and and being lucky and all that yeah. stuff it's fucking just is keeping that relentless work ethic in that those ideas and and pushing forward like this whole thing started with selling hats like i fucking was like man nobody wears any cannabis hats i want a plug hat i want a pusher hat i want a canopy king like that's how it started with just my hats mm -hmm. You know, and it just led into everything else. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Craft fucking hats. Like, who else has nicer 3D puff stitching than I do? Nobody. Nobody. So Nobody. This shit's I'm just saying, fun. like, yeah. everything I do is craft, and, and I want, like, I'm not just going to make T-shirts and fucking hats and try to sell them. Like, mm -hmm. my shit has to look, look at how pristine this when fucking is. When you gave me this shit earlier, and, I was, yeah. And no. the black outline, and, like... Like, I've never bought another hat like this. Like, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, and everything I do, I want to do. Like, I want people to get it and, like, like feel like it's nice. Like, they're spending money with me. Like, I want to give them something that's not available and, and something cool at the same time. Something that I want. Yeah, absolutely. So, that kind of leads me into a question I have in regards to... We look at, like, certain... Because uh, right now, there's the regulations with THC. So, there's companies out there that have the ancillary products. So, for example... Some companies have CBD. That's probably not the best one, but some companies have clothing, right? Cookies is one. Jungle Boys is one. So it allows you to get your brand, your product outside of markets that you can't reach at with THC or whatever it may be. I don't think I'm really reaching any of those markets particularly. In terms of? Just like who's buying my fucking gear. Like mm -hmm. I can't. I'm nowhere like fucking Jungle Boys clothing or No, or I'm not saying no, no, but that's my question though. I'm not actually, I don't think it's clothing, but is it not the consulting though? And, and the consulting of the Patreon, the consulting with the other, like with the whip kits, like that's where I think it's different. Like for sure, you're different there. Like your, your ancillary product that can reach markets that aren't opened is your consulting, is your knowledge, is your whole IP. It's mixing it with quality products that genuinely help you with knowledge that genuinely helps you and they go together right. and they help people grow better. Now, there are differences within the clothing and that one is functional and helps you genuinely you know like produce more right get more but the hat the clothing is more so the brand representation it's showing the world i identify with that group i How basically we, made it just because i didn't yeah. feel like there was like i didn't want to be a walking billboard for anyone but myself yeah I, well no absolutely yeah. well i think it's gonna over time it already has been it's coming, so. it's coming full circle now i wish i, I want my craft farmer that's why i was like i was bugging for it i wish i sold more apparel than i did you know what i'm saying like Maybe one day, you know, it'll it'll turn into that. Oh, but. I think it will. I see that over there. You got some fire ass design. For sure, uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that's I think that's really dope. I think it's really unique, and I think it's. But I, what I'm what I'm also wondering is like it's been it's been harder though. Like yeah. as I've gotten more popular, well, it's a limited market, right? As I've gotten market. more popular and bigger, I've also been suppressed by fucking social media. So mm -hmm. as hard as I'm working. Like the machine is suppressing me more and more, and I can see it. Like I'm not just saying it; I'm seeing no, it from absolutely. like from my views to my engagement to um, how many people are seeing my stories to how many messages I'm getting. Like the the more momentum I'm getting, it seems like like it's only a matter of time before my account's deleted again. Like I've already lost it twice and got it back. Mm -hmm. The next time I this count gets taken from me it's going to be gone i just know it because like i'm seeing all my tools being taken away from me daily like i can't even add links to stories anymore yeah and that's in regards to and i don't even get my shit flagged wait you can't so do the links now nope like and i've never had my account flagged like you see people like having shit my, flagged my shit like where you can't repost my shit you can't even yeah like my yeah. my i really noticed it when i did the jungle boys drop when i dropped my flower there and i started tagging jungle boys like that's when the fucking blanket was like pulled over me and mm -hmm. I've just never been able to get away from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I see other cannabis accounts of people I know who are just growers and they post a flower pick and 9,000 people view their story. And I just don't understand how I post like an advertisement or a whip kit or something like that and like 1,500 people see my story. So. Yeah. I think it's, it's when I, the more I study YouTube and the more I notice with like videos I post and stuff, it's keywords. This is Instagram. So I know, I know, I know Instagram is, well, I guess Instagram is a little different, but I think that carries over into, I don't know, Instagram is kind of a, a, a mess. Um, um, it's like ever since they got rid of that search feature and hit us, you know, a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it is. tiny little bubble. It's just kind of gotten mm -hmm. a little worse. Like I'm, I'm grateful that I have my account and I get lots of followers, but 
people have to really look out for me. People have to, you know, like you can't, it's very hard for people to tag me because you got to type the whole fucking name in. It doesn't come up. It's just, you know, I'm grateful that I'm making the money I am with being shadow banned as, as hard as I am, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is what it is, you know? I'm just going to yeah. keep pushing forward and yeah. keep doing my thing. Like, <clears throat> I don't see myself doing the consultation stuff very much longer mm -hmm. honestly like that's not my fucking thing that's not my specialty i'm first and foremost i'm not a teacher you know what i'm saying like i i explain things well and i can i can teach things to people easily because i've struggled through it myself mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i want to be slaying massive fucking gardens with with my partners and i want to focus on just being the person that Everybody to, fucking yeah. got to know, like just the super energetic, super excited, like like the fucking the adrenaline rushes that I get being in big fucking gardens when my canopies are crushing and my own jaw dropping is like the greatest fucking feeling in the world. So mm -hmm. the moment that my facilities come online, like I'm not going to be blessing other people by building theirs. Let's just say that like Absolutely. and not not for any other reason that I'm not going to have the time like. I've I've promised my partners and the people that I'm working with that I'm going to do something fucking legendary and great and yeah. that's going to take all of my fucking focus. Yeah, absolutely. Um would you ever consider like installing kind of a a system if it made sense to continue the teaching like in terms of I mean, I'm I'm working on it like right now I plan on, you know, like let's be real. <laughs> I set some trends. Like we've seen me setting trends in this industry where where people are following and doing these things because I'm doing them and I think that's great. Like mm -hmm. I love inspiring people. Like ask you can ask other people who have um Patreons set up for cultivating and they've reached out who, to me. Yeah. Who I I don't know other people. I've, I'm just saying, like, they've reached out to me and be like, hey, is it an issue that, oh, okay. you know, like, that I follow you and take your information and um, share that in mine? And not at all. Okay. I'm not a fucking hater by, dude, hate is for the fucking weak-minded, mm -hmm. the weak-hearted. I have no fucking hate inside of my body. So why waste the time on it? I didn't come up with cultivation. Mm -hmm. My style of cultivation, I didn't invent. I've learned it from watching other people. I'm not trying to say that I invented anything. So you learning something from me and then retelling your people doesn't bother me one bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not genetics you bred. Right? And even genetics. Like, that's why like, <laughs> like, yeah. like I've never got into that thing where you stole my thing. Like, How can you steal a plant? Like, if you use it, someone else's genetics and created got. your shit, how can you get mad at someone else when, when your shit gets leaked and someone else created And, like, it's just a dumbass fucking game. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I'm not trying to have that argument right now and, and get into that, but I'm saying, like, I, I don't it's fuck with fun. that shit. No, I don't fuck stupid. with people trying to say, this is mine and I own this and mm -hmm. you can't have it. And I don't fuck with any of that shit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's I'm not fun. on that level. At all. It's a complete waste of time. It's Information is meant to be shared. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I would way rather fucking elevate my peers and the people around me than keep my fucking information myself and be, be selfish. Craft Farmer is not a selfish fucking person by, yeah. by any means. Yeah. I think the market has responded to that. And so answering yeah, that question, yeah. I'm starting Craft Farmer Academy. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a standalone website. It's going to be much better than anyone's fucking Patreon out there because it won't be a blog style. I'll have categories where you can get the information you need. I'm going to have guest cultivators sharing information. I'm going to empower my peers and put them on payroll. You know what I'm saying? So like, I want to help other people make money. I want to find other cultivators and be like, hey, if you want to be a, a, a guest during the next four months and, and share information on here, I'm going to cut the check, huh. so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'll always do the education. I'm always going to do the Craft Farmer Academy. I'm going to have craftfarmer.com. I'm going to sell the irrigation, but I won't be doing like consultation probably where I'm picking up the phone and I'm fucking talking to people and I'm designing their plans and dealing with all the bullshit and saving them tens of thousands of dollars because I'm going to take all that information and focus on fucking cultivation. Absolutely. And also, the more stuff you get, the more, you know, worth your time is. I mean, you, time is worth money. And also, you've also now established, especially with the craft farmer, right, that's going to be there. You're going to, like, these people are going to be able to go there and, uh, you know, take the initiative to figure For it out. For me, also, like, like when I when I we were doing this whole idea in Michigan and my partner Mark out there who's who's the fucking 
who's the lion of like this whole deal and, and really made this possible for us. Like for me, it was also getting really fire flower to people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think David from Preferred Gardens is the goat, probably yeah. one of the best in the state at cultivating. And that's why I went to him and was like, bro, I want you to be my partner on this. And dude, the crazy thing, like David and I have a, a lot of very, very similarities, which mm -hmm. is crazy. We were both born on August 14th, 1983. Mm -hmm. We were born on the same day, the same fucking year. We had very similar stories. Mm -hmm. We both came up in mixed light and indoor. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, me and him are peanut butter and jelly. Absolutely. Like, it doesn't get any better than, than all the relationships I've had and all the people I've worked with, like... I vibe with that dude on another yes. level. Yeah. Like when him and I sit down together and, and talk mm -hmm. and we can, we can ha have very few words and have amazing results. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like we're thinking the same. We're working the same. We're, every move counterbalances the other person's move as far as Absolutely. the shit we're doing. And, and I'm just inspired to, to fucking grow flour for the world to smoke. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. That, so... For, you know, maybe we talk about this, you know, maybe, you know, but we mentioned this earlier in this video, but for people that aren't aware, right, Golden State Exotics. Golden State Exotics Partnership. Is, is basically a dispensary brand that we're starting out in Michigan. We're going to have multiple dispensaries. Um, David and I are going to fucking cultivate for it. And yeah. I put together a dream team out there. Dude, that, yeah, it sounds you know what like I'm saying? It. Between, mm. between Mark, David, me... My other partner, Ghost, like, mm -hmm. we have, it's a dream team. It's a, when, you, when you told me this day, I was like, oh, shit. Like, Mixed Light Indoor, I mean, Mixed Light Special, like, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be, first of all, too, like, I do want to, like, something that I love, I love is, you know, this is obviously a high, you know, we're doing high design. We did one on David. I love to see that come together and, like, the high design. For network. sure. Because, but also, too, like, I knew it was like, that's going to be a deadly, deadly, deadly combo because I've spent hours talking to David. I've spent hours talking and to And then David. the way we do shit, like Dave yeah. and I, Think money has never come up no. in conversation. We don't give a fuck about money. Dave and I make money. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is pure out of fucking passion, passion for out of insp inspiring other people, showing you that like, look, me and Dave took no fucking handouts. We have, we have no partners outside this project. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like this is a pure passion project. Like, let's do something fucking amazing. Let's do something legendary. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? And, I mean, it is a match made in heaven because... Dude, and my yeah. partner, Mark Savaya, like, yeah. dude, wait till the world gets to know yeah. this fucking I wanna, dude. This, I want to meet him. This yeah. dude's insane, yeah, dude. Absolutely. This dude's For you guys to partner insane. with him, obviously, you must be because, well, like, you have high standards, but, like, you know, like, David, too, like, when I would talk to David, he never wanted to partner with anybody. For sure. Neither have I. And, and like the fact that you guys came together, you guys. I said I would yeah. never work. Yeah. I would never partner with anyone ever again. You, yeah. Literally. And then like here I am. Yeah. In a deal. A hundred percent. And I think it's gonna. I mean, if people. I mean, I don't think people are sleeping on it really now because people understand. But aren't there? This y'all are about to be. Bro, Craft Farmer was entertaining before. You have no idea, like, the the entertainment value that I'm gonna bring next time and i'm not saying that because i'm going to try it's because the 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 grow rooms and the facilities we're building right now mm -hmm. are are fucking incredible mm -hmm. and that's going to bring out a side of me that the world hasn't seen before you know what i'm saying absolutely I, i'm excited to see it i'm excited to see it because i mean just also, a lot of people miss that shit i like, miss I that, that shit. shit all the time like you hired the motherfucking mvp i tell the truth I don't I, give a fuck about the company. I don't give a fuck about who's at that. the top. Like yeah. I'm, I I warn people when I go to work with them in the beginning. Like I just want you to know, like I'm not like any fucking other person that's ever worked with, worked for. I'm not controllable. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna perform, but I'm gonna do it my way. Yeah. And I've always done everything my way. And you either like it or you don't. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Well, the stupid people try to, you know, they don't embrace that. What do you mean? Like, and dude, I've had <laughs> a lot of people who didn't like me. Yeah. Like I've, I've, well, dude, like, I like to think about it as like, I'm the bad guy. You remember Razor Ramon? Nobody, like he was the bad guy. He was supposed to be the heel, but everyone loved him. You know, and everybody at, at first was like, man, who the fuck is this guy? Why is he so excited? Why is he yelling? Fuck this guy. He's full of himself. 
And then they watch and they see the trials and the tribulations and they're like, okay, this guy can say whatever the fuck he wants. Like, he's crushing it. I shared my, people. I'd share yeah. my wins, my losses, mm -hmm. my fucking rooms flooding, mistakes being made. I don't, I'm not hiding any of that shit, yeah. you know? Well, we're in the, we're in the era, the internet era has brought the era of authenticity. People attract to that. You can show mistakes. You're not going to be perfect. Look at Will Smith. For sure. Will Smith grew up in this time where you, the 90s where you have to be perfect and, and anyway it's um it's yeah it's really cool to see when um what you guys are you know what you guys are planning what you guys are you know gonna do um i think this guy's the fucking limit um but i also want to say going back to the um craft craft farmer academy i love the fact that now that you've you know, obtained a platform, you were following, you're now going to help put on other people that, you know, somebody like, you know, create some amazing proprietary tech or... Dude, in the reality, yeah. there's absolutely, there's not one person who hasn't gained information or progressed by signing up for the Patreon. I can say that whether they stay around for a month, I got people on there have been there since day one. You look at, they've spent $4,000 with yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Like... You can't deny that information that I share and mm -hmm. irrigation strategies, like it, it brings amazing results mm -hmm. and that's what it's there for. It's there for you to learn from and to an advance and there's no school out there. There's no class. There's nothing mm -hmm. you can do where you're going to learn more than what I offer yeah. in my educational yeah. programs. Well, the difference too is the products that you're, you're offering too. Like there's, com there's, there's big companies out there that do these online courses. They, they teach... But they don't really sell products, so they can't necessarily get checked on their shit. For sure. Like, I know, prove, like you like prove it with. Like, I know your that I stuff. can. Like you can hit me up and yeah. be like, "Hey, I've got this garage space. Mm -hmm. You can pay me to fucking do your drawing, give you a material list, design it fucking perfectly, flawlessly, where I know it's going to mm -hmm. execute. I can then give you the best prices on this fucking material list of items, ship it right to you, hold your hand through building it, and then you're going to come out the gate crushing it. There's nobody else doing that. And then all these like contractors and plumbers and these dudes who want to talk shit and say, oh, we've done whip kits way longer. They don't have shit on me. They might be able to build a system. They couldn't fucking run it or grow it if their life depended on it. They also so they can yeah. just step aside. They can put their fucking tools at the front door and leave them there. Yeah. They also... There's no yeah. competition for me. Oh, yeah. All these dudes saying they've been building whip kits for 20 years and shit. You've never been on my level. You've never fucking grown on my level. They've never been able to put the system in and then show the person how to come out the gate and crush it their first time. A they build it and they, and they bounce. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah, 100%. And that's, I think, where the Patreon, the knowledge comes in to play. I mean, you also, like you were saying, you're really good at taking concepts, you know, simplifying it, adapting it, making it easily understood. And then again, like people want to be like, oh, well, like this has been around forever. This has been the whip. Motherfucker, I haven't heard the word, yeah, term man. whip kit until yeah. I came out with it. So. yeah. yeah. It's just, it's pointless, <laughs> wasted. I don't fuck yeah. with that shit at all, no. you know? Waste I'm too busy shit. helping people win and showing them a life of steak and lobster than have time for the fucking noise. That's why I also don't have time to, like, when people are like, oh, they fucking sold Athena, they sold out. Like, oh yeah, I don't give a fuck I mean, about any of that. Like, that's the whole well, point of this yeah, game. This is America. Mm -hmm. This is the red, white, and blue. This is where you're doing everything in your life to progress yourself and your family and your immediate connected circle. Oh, but you turn your back on the this culture. Guy, Shut this the guy fuck stole up. this and he Shut came from another up. company. We all come from places. Yeah. The world is learning a trade and then and then somehow fucking either doing it yourself or advance. Like, I just don't got time for any of that shit. Well, the whole Lux Lighting thing, right? You know, people gave Jungle Boys or, you know, like, what do you mean? That's a business. You think all of these brands from the culture aren't making business decisions for sure under the guise like you know like it's important like you know you don't want to see massive corporations come in and like destroy everything but i think people in the campus just need to realize like i started my youtube channel to just talk about business to educate these people in the culture to realize you're gonna have to adapt there's a balance of culture and corporate. I'm not fighting this monster. No, you need to ride. Like I always say, it's like find where you can ride the wave. Exactly. And not get fucking drowned. Exactly. That's what I always said. It's like you, the whole angle at the end of the day. Oh, what? You think you're going to go acquire these big, wait, yeah. you're the minnow. You need to turn yourself into a fish that can then, you know, 
make its way you know through the river and life is the wave (laughs) and it's up to you to catch it and find how you can fucking paddle in and the corporate wave is coming and it's it's a tsunami it's already world is corporate well exactly it will it's busy and it's like corporate operates the world the only reason the world moves forward is because of corporate it is what it is it's Mm -hmm. just part of our life and i'm not going to try to be a fucking pawn and sit here and, and talk about how i'm fucking stand alone and fuck them like dude like like the whole grow generation deal like i just did a deal with fucking grow generation mm-hmm. i shop at the store grow gens right there they always have what i want i go to grow generation people are like oh fuck grow generation and and they don't they, what yeah, they're a what? fucking what? grow store dude they sell they sell products they have every brand under their roof like what i don't understand the whole like hate and like fuck them and it's just it's I don't, also weird because it's also like it's kind and, and i'm i can get where some of the like elements, i have homies that work yeah. at those gross stores well, yeah, yeah they bought all the stores that i used to shop of like it's just part of life like you're damn right i'm gonna try to do a deal with grow generation <laughs> yeah, like dude, bro absolutely. look at what they've done they ins- they inspire yeah, me absolutely. they had one store in colorado fucking three years ago and look what they've done like i don't got time to have these co- conversations with you if you don't want to fuck with craft farmer anymore because he's doing big deals and listen i own 100 percent of my company i only do deals that i want to do i wanted to fuck with grow generation they wanted to be in the craft farmer business let's let's fucking do business cut the check I don't got time to listen to anyone else who says I'm selling out or I'm dumb. Like, bitch, I'm putting fucking food on my family's well, plate. Well, I have yeah. employees down there who pack orders. Mm-hmm. I'm changing people's lives who buy my whip kit. I don't got time to fucking hear the nonsense. Yeah. Well, it's kind of weird because I get where... Of the course el- they want to fuck with me. Well, no, no. But this all, like, I get where some of the elements of the, like, that, like, oh, you, like, you're like going too corporate. But, like, really at the end of the day, though, it's kind of like this whole sentiment of, like, Oh, you're doing better than me, bro. I want to. You're fuck doing the better than me. Well, that, that's my thing. It's like, like what? Like, wait, my, wait, 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 wait. You're hating on me for my doing buddy, well. My buddy's calling me and telling me like, oh man, this is the problem with the world, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, I don't have these problems. The world is what the world is. I'm not fucking dropping bombs at anyone. I grow weed and get people stoned. Like, like I'm not even gonna waste my time thinking about the shit you're doing. Like, I can't control the narrative of how the world spins and, and how it operates. And all I can do is fit into it somehow. Yeah. And 15 years from now, 20 years from now, what even is what we think of the culture? Like, it's gonna be nothing. What exactly? Well, I, I mean, and, and it's and it's it's gonna be so changed. There's only gonna be a few because people left. Because the culture comes from the illegal market, right? That's really that's one component to it, right? In, in a sense. I don't even know. I mean, what would you? I like, mean, what is culture? Culture is communities coming together, you know, having, I mean, yeah, I guess what is culture? What's the definition of culture? Yeah. Let me look that up. Let's look it up. Let's definitely look that up. Because I think this is honestly a conversation that needs Because this yeah. is a big thing now. Like, everybody's like, oh, like, we need to preserve well, the be, culture. And, like, and I get that. Culture is preserved through people and exactly. through individuals and... And sharing our story. Well, that's and why letting, I storytell. That's not what letting, I want to do. Not yeah. letting fucking history be erased from the fucking narrative. That's culture. Like, we always need to tell our story. We always need to tell how we got here. We always need to inspire. Like, that's fucking culture. The moment we stop talking about the last 20 years, then there's no culture. Yeah. What the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively so you want to preserve the call yeah the customs arts social institutions and achievements of a particular nation people or other social group so the cannabis culture is preserving what we've done over the last 50 years dating back to the original forefathers who risked their their freedom and their lives to grow medicine. It's important that we always tell the fucking stories of Calaveras County, of the Emerald Triangle, of of fucking Mendocino County, of Trinity County, of of the fucking dinosaurs that are like going extinct yeah. because we because they can't continue to fucking stay afloat, and that's what's going to happen. So when the when the legacy growers are 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 one day possibly just down to a very small amount it's very important that we constantly tell like the trials the tribulations the struggles the stories of the preferred gardens of the craft farmers of the fucking jungle boys of 
um, the Dojas, the Green Dogs. Um, I mean, there's so many that I'm fucking missing. So many. You know? Well, that's, that's literally what, you know, I'm, one of my main goals is, really. Like, I have the Trap Tree series. They're talking about the trappers. You know, I want to start to build that up so I can get more and more of those out. But And I think just getting them on yeah. YouTube where they're preserved. That's exactly. That's, and that's the whole thing. And that's all we can really fucking do. Because if you're trying to have us stay in this, like, whatever you think, you, what, you don't want us to evolve? But then look at, like, people, like, Grow Generation supports Craft Farmer. Like, they support my idea. They support my teaching. They support me helping other people. They support the idea of getting the product to more people. So it's like, there's just this real... It's getting weaponized confused. now. It's getting weaponized, though, now. You know it's, what it reminds me of? Yeah. It really reminds me when I was young, and artists would, would be, like, fucking struggling to get a tape out their car, and then the moment they sign a fucking record deal, everyone's like, fuck you, you sold wow. out. Motherfucker, I'm not eating Top Ramen slaving tapes out of the yeah. trunk of my car, so I sold out. I've never fucked with that. I've yeah. never fucked with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's adapted with music, for example. I mean, record labels can be, uh, you know, they can be manipulated, they can be abused, they can be... Everyone is. No, 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 I'm, I'm not talking like that. I'm not talking like that. I'm talking about them taking advantage of the artist but nowadays in music rap music is now the medium we celebrate Dude, we celebrate success though everyone, we celebrate that every single person can be taken advantage of it's fucking I'm, up to you to make sure, you, to make sure don't you don't get taken yeah. advantage yeah. of i'm not going to sign a contract mm -hmm. ever with it taking advantage of me cuz i don't yeah. fucking need the money there's nothing they mm -hmm. can offer me to get me to sign that contract don't sign the three. And all deal. the people that mm -hmm. complain and they're like, I fucked up and I signed, they made right. a mistake. Took the money early because you didn't want to wait. Day, yeah. You can make the decision yeah. on what you do and what Luke does mm -hmm. and what you do for your brand. You have the end. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking Lily. If you don't agree with my decisions, I don't give a fuck. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't have any yeah. any v validity in my life. I do what I fucking want. And I've done what I want since well, day one. Yeah, well that's why I think it's getting weaponized now. It's like people like Either they're failing or they want to, you know, they don't like to see other people's success. And so they're like, oh, you're now a two corporate. The corporations run America. America runs the world. I mean, that's like a kind of a right. very oversimplification, but it's kind of true, right? Corporations are people that can, you know, they run, let's be honest, right? Politically, they run right. everything. We don't have Republicans, Democrats. Like, For sure. <laughs> control the one party system, but, you know. And there's a, re I mean, corporations are, you know, in terms of, they're designed to make profit the most efficient way possible, and to keep the, keep the blood moving through the system, which is money. But I don't know. It's getting interesting because I, I, it's preservation. That's really the key. Like when we talk about we need to keep the culture alive. What do you mean? What about the cultures that died ten thousand? You know, like I wish they were preserved so we could keep that knowledge, so we could remember them, we could respect them, we could. Go back and, you know, how much knowledge has been lost over the years? How many times have we, as a humans, we had to relearn shit? Right. You know, now we have the internet. We're going to be able to, you know, be able to digitize this shit. But, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I got a couple more, couple more questions, and then we can, um, there it was up. But I guess that's kind of by, I guess, like, to round it all out, what's, like, the importance of media in today's cannabis market? Or what's the future of it, too? And I don't even think I know enough about it. Like, it's so funny because, like, when you say, like, when you talk about, like, media and promoting and... Um, what do you know about media? You should know maybe... I mean, I know about it by accident, I feel like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like marketing, when people are like, oh, my God, Lance, yeah. you're a marketing genius. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was by accident. I'm just a super outgoing, loud, vocal person. And you're adding I'm, value. That's I'm, really I'm, the basis. I'm yeah. loud and I do have value. Like Absolutely. the people who don't like me, they still tune in to, to like, okay, let's just talk about how I got started. Mm -hmm. Like people tuned in and like, that was my own excitement. I wasn't doing that for a show. Like you can hear it. I was fucking excited. And like, whether you didn't like me at first, like people kept tuning in. Like my account blew up because people tuned in every fucking day for my stories mm -hmm. and it got people hyped. I can't tell you how many fucking facilities gets their employees hyped or or they're like do we watch your stories as a group or this or that because like i fucking hype people up like it's organic Absolutely. you can't yeah. make that shit up people are like oh well you're mark dude it it was just organic yeah. and it was me and that's why it worked especially in cannabis 
more than anything, just like a fucking rapper can't just come out and start a weed brand, no one fucks with it. If it's not real authentic. and authentic, people won't fuck with it. Burner, real fucking smoker, really cares about the plant. Say whatever the fuck you want about him, but it's real, it's authentic. He's a true smoker. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Real smoker. Like, that's authentic. People fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with that. Yeah. You know but what I mean? Drake. Drake's Does Drake have his own line? So Drake's brand, like, like you got, so... And then look Canopy at... Growth dropped Drake. They kept Martha Stewart. They dropped him, which is... Uh, That's funny. Isn't that funny? I did a little, like... Well, and then look at Lil Wayne. Like, his... Whatever the fuck weird brand, his shit. Like, yeah. it just... That doesn't work. People yeah. don't fuck with it unless it's organic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Cactus Farms. Travis I mean, Scott. People didn't really fuck with that either. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know they're going to try... I'm just saying, like, you got to be authentic. You can't just Especially be like... Especially in Canada. Oh, I'm like a rapper. Said. I'm going to start a brand. And yeah. it just doesn't fucking well, work. Well, I've always said, like, you really need to really come from within the culture and build out. It's hard to build from outside the culture in. For sure. And there's a really... I mean, and when I say, like, call it the community more so. Like... Community is really, really strong with cannabis. I mean, there's a. The reality is, like, I can't tell the story on my own. I have. We need media to like share these stories. Like, dude, it it. Like anything else, it takes very talented people mm -hmm. to be able to take a story, and then, and then, do the story justice. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've never gone on a podcast before, and I don't go on a podcast. I haven't not gone on a podcast because I haven't been asked. I don't go on a podcast because how good is the person going to be that's asking me the questions and that can that can lead that. If I'm going on someone else's podcast, it's their show. I'm their guest. I don't want to fucking go into a podcast and, and not be myself and they're asking boring questions and there's this, like, I just don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got time for that. So, like, that's like a reason I've steered away and... And like, unless someone comes to me and we've got an agenda and what we want to talk about, like I'll do it. But like, I'm too busy to just go wonder what it's going to be like to be on a podcast yeah. that can't portray who I am properly, can't, can't tell our story, can't tell what we've been through. Like we can't just have any media fucking make a video and, and try to tell my story and manipulate it in a fucking <laughs> way that they don't understand. It has to be, my story will never be told truthfully unless it's done by somebody who can understand what I've been through, who can close their eyes and put themselves in my fucking position yeah. and be like, oh my God, like yeah. I can't imagine what that would what, what that would have been like. Or it's just told f falsely and there was no point in doing yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, it's m media... It's very important that media tells the true story, and that's very hard to portray if you don't have any fucking any any part of the industry. If you're coming from the outside in, just trying to portray a story, it's not going to happen. Our stories yeah. are so fucking different than anything else out there. Absolutely, especially especially yours too. Like, I mean, your your story is first of all, it's just it's a lot to understand it all too. For sure, like. And that will, with the high, high It's almost too, yeah. overwhelming to look at like my last 20 years, like everything that I've gone through yeah. and the resets and, and the pitfalls and, and, and the, sh like, it's just like, it, it's a, it's a fucking, it's not real. It's what's it called when they make a movie that doesn't have a true story? Nonfiction. Non-fiction. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't make sense, you know? It, it doesn't make sense, but it also does in the sense where, and I'm honestly, I, I could like, I've been studying your story, you know, I've, I've spent out like hours, like multiple days collectively now knowing your story. Like, and it's still a lot more to it, you know, like, but overall, like you have this will where you've just, it doesn't make sense because it's been like, you've been knocked down 10, 50, like for sure in the most fucked up ways. Because like I've always, I've said, you know, off, off camera, like I, I promise you 99% of the shit, you know, that you went through 90%, 99% of people. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Like, some of the shit that I learned from, you know, you telling me your story, uh, me kind of, like, talking about it, analyzing it, I don't know if I could have gone through some of that shit. For you know sure. What I mean? Well, I'll tell you right now, like, looking back at, because, like, I think about it, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, there's no way I can, I don't, I don't, like, how did I get through that? Like, the person me now, like, I see myself tapping out on, like, dude. multiple occasions. And you know? that's why, like, for, like, this is, like, so I've been so this this whole project like working on like it's been really really I mean all of them are really special to me but like this one specifically has been um, you know I, I'm 
want to thank you for allowing me to, you know, help tell the story, but also like, like this, like the whole ethos of high design is to never give up. But the thing is like, you are the definition of never giving up. Dude, if my story like, can't inspire you, then you're fucking obviously in the wrong field and going the wrong direction yeah. because every single situation in person and municipality and everybody bosses and people I've worked with and just fucking, you know what I mean? When it doesn't work out and they'll tell you that it's just like, I've done every fucking thing that you're not supposed to do down to being a cultivator, buying my own flower for the company that I worked for, trimming it, QCing it, bagging it, and then selling it to someone like the Jungle Boys to fucking get a hold of Ivan and get someone like that to buy the flower. Like, like that's just, an, that, that happened at a time when everybody was like throwing in the towels and saying, we're not going to be able to do this and we can't do that. And little did they know for years, I'm growing it and then driving all around the Bay Area selling my packs to keep going. Like, there's nothing that, like, I don't got time to fucking hear people who are like, man, I can't do this. And I mean, I, I've got time now because you know, I help people and I inspire them, but like, there's no such thing as like, like when you hit a wall, you just pivot, you know, like as long as you're never moving back, like think about a maze, you know, sometimes you got to go back and then Mm -hmm. back up and around and like, that's just life. As long as you keep moving, it's like, you know, they like when you're wheeling and shit, like, oh man, you know, whatever you do, don't stop in the mud. Like just, just no matter what, keep fucking moving. It's like a race. And like when, when triathlon people are going to fail, when you stop progressing some direction forward back left and right that's when that's when it's really hard to start again so yeah. regardless of how bad life is what you're doing like as long as you're just 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 treading and treading and and you keep just fucking pivoting and moving as long as you're moving you're you yeah sky's the limit and that's very well said and i think like it's going to be hard but like my you know funny, funny enough my my mom always had this quote like fatalism is easy for sure easy Optimism, pushing forward, that's hard. That's hard, especially when everything's stacked against you. Easy to give up. For sure. Easy to be like, what? Giving up is the easiest thing Easy shit ever, bro. Oh, your, your, your shit's going, it's so hard for you? No, it's easy for you right tapping now. Out <laughs> tapping out is the fucking out. easier. Going 10 years, not seeing any results, but keep going. 50, like, my, my whole thing is like, bro, like for me, for example, for YouTube, like, you know, I've been, you know, every single day, pretty much, grinding on this YouTube shit for about two and a half years, I've seen not that much growth, to be honest. Like, I've, I've, there's some, I'm learning more and more. Like, I'm doing high amounts of volume, but, like, I know for a fact I'm never giving up until I succeed. Sure. Oh, I'm literally not. I, well, like, people tell no. me, like, man, I've been doing this for three years. Motherfucker, Bro, try 10, 15, I've motherfucker. I've done 20 yeah. years, yeah. and I'm just finally now, like, catching my rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and that's why I love your story, too, because it's, like, it is so dope to see, like, this just the whole progression of it dude it's it really is like so inspiring like and and now it's at the point where like such big shit is happening like everybody around me is getting affected by it like everybody's getting like these monumental opportunities and these monumental wins and we're doing things that like like on levels like even the podcast you know what I'm saying? Like fucking all these cameras surrounding us and this equipment and and fucking Ian. And like Ian, we dude, manifested yeah. oh this. God, like mm-hmm. you know, like it. All this shit is easy for me to do, but like behind the scenes, Ian does everything. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he's editing everything. I'm throwing fucking ideas all the. No, I don't like that. Let's do this. We need this. I need this. Like like the amount of hours he spends editing, hours and hours yeah. and hours. Like it's. It's yeah. fucking incredible. Like, Absolutely. And Ian, and like I told Ian earlier, I was like, I like I have a pretty good understanding of like videography, just like one of the best videographers I've ever, ever seen. And the thing is like, yeah. I'm an intense dude. Yeah. Like it's been challenging for me throughout my life to even find people that I can work yeah. with who, who don't fold or, or who don't feel like disrespected mm-hmm. and like, you know, like I've known Ian since he was 11. Like it takes a very special person to be able to be around me and mm-hmm. deal with me. And and Ian, Ian fucking does it extremely well, you know, yeah, very, absolutely. very well. Absolutely. Well, let me like just kind of, I guess we can round it out is I want to ask you, what do you look for like building a team? Because you're starting to scale up now too. Like I couldn't like, do this. Yeah. 
Like all the shit that I've wanted to do that I've dreamed about, like making videos mm -hmm. and sharing yeah. d daily life and like all that shit I couldn't do without Ian. I can't do this shit. Mm -hmm. I don't try to pretend to be able to do everything yeah. that I can. Like I can't do it. If anybody do does, it. they're lying and they're also not going to be successful. Anybody who truly knows the whole, like, the whole thing, oh, if I've... If the only way it's going to be done right is if I do it. No, dude. If you ever want to actually be really successful, actually run a bit, like, it all starts with teamwork. All starts with building that team. I guess, like, what I'm curious is, like, is it just your personality is, is, is demanding? And you I think to, at this, what is, like, yeah. I think now at this point in my life, like, my personality and who I am mm -hmm. is, like, attracting some monumental people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, finally Absolutely. now, Absolutely. finally now, like, like through everything, how crazy I am and how wild I am, like it's starting to... The momentum is starting to... Bro, really, I've literally yeah. attracted unicorns in my life mm -hmm. and like I'm surrounded by like some straight killers, you know, because like I've, I've attracted that. I've attracted the projects. I've, I've, I've manifested the opportunities that will allow people like me, David, Mark, Ghost, mm -hmm. Ian to come together you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, just our cultivation team in, in Santa Rosa, like, is amazing. Like, you yeah. got to meet Chris today, yeah. just yeah. one person. Such but like, dude. That dude was, Chris, yeah, the real one. Absolutely. And that's like. And then look what he says. Look at how T talks about me. Like, and I'm like, bro, like, I haven't done anything for you. You've done that for yourself. Yeah. But, but like, a lot of people share that mentality. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. like, I don't take credit for it at all. Mm -hmm. I might have just been the vessel yeah. to help them the plow, the help to realize them. what mm -hmm. they're capable of and give and put them in a situation where they can really fucking gain success and notoriety. And I think really though that's like a great you know, not it's like a definition of leadership. That's like what leadership is really. I mean it's how you organize people effectively and to accomplish great things. Like that's like bro, there's definitely this pro wrestling element to like what I'm doing. Yeah. Like when I fuck around and yeah. I'm talking about cut the check yeah. and little, let's go get bags of money and this. Like you've been around me, you see it like there's no money anywhere. Like it's all spent and, and it's just like it, it's just like living this kind of like this fantasy and fucking around with it. But and keeping that hype though, when we did our interview, like when we did like just our, our just initial interviews. I mean, you got me fucking hyped for sure you get people hyped for sure and that's 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 helping you know your overall reach and then you're getting your name out and then people want to come and say what's up wait so what is what is craft does he, does he value I think and the then most you have the value too there. Yeah. is like people will meet me yeah and they're like holy shit like this yeah. dude <laughs> is just like the dude <laughs> like they're expecting to meet someone else yeah someone else who's not me who's fake like mm -hmm. i mean bro putting the helmet on doing the ward Pro, like we did the fucking oh I got the videos the fucking I got the videos. money dance yeah. to the grow yeah, gods like absolutely. all that shit's real yeah. like I believe it bro mm -hmm. like I believe that like I can call upon the grow gods and like these packages will be blessed and these irrigation kits will bring people value and and I'm a fool I believe all that shit like mm -hmm. at the the, fir the the most important thing is like I hype myself up enough to be valuable to help other people. Well, so much energy irradiates other people. For sure. Like, I think that's a, that's like, yeah, like you were saying that earlier. Um, and it's, it's infectious and it's positive energy. It's po it's like, oh, you got a problem? Okay, let's go find the solution. It's I mean, look at everybody who comes around from Robert to doing the construction mm -hmm. to Raul packing the boxes to Ian doing all my footage to Chris working in the nursery to Ghost who you haven't met yet. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, um, it's, Infectious. It's, it's like infectious. a fucking virus, mm -hmm. bro. Infectious. It's and also, virus. I think too is because you, you know, your craft, you have this high expectation, but it's like, you know, I think just that infectious energy, you know, it just inherently wants people to have like, this is what we're doing here right now. For sure. Like I sent you that text that morning, so I'm like, for sure, we're gonna like, there's, you know, this is gonna be the, you know, and I, I think. I think it's very infectious, and I think that's one sign of just a natural born leader, right? And so I feel compelled to just do anything I can to um, bring um, encouragement and opportunity. And dude, we're in a very, nobody like talks about it, but like, dude, this fucking industry is very grueling. Dude, when you grow like flower on the level we do and every fucking time it has to be perfect or your, like nobody wants to hear your flowers are mids or we don't like your flowers. And like one small mistake, Everything. like dude, to stay, to fucking produce one room every 60 days and have it be on an elite level and not get stir, get stir 
not get discouraged and not want to fucking throw in the towel and then when you then doing it so well where like you're not just allowing the machine to chew you up and spit you out like it's very challenging yeah, yeah. and you also get taxed very 50%. grueling and then you know like you know so it's fucking just come with that energy yeah. every day day like it's very hard to be a fucking an elite cultivator yeah. and 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 maintain that momentum yeah. day in and day out yeah and the last thing i want to guess like wrap on is one thing you know i've People have talked about this that, um, you know, different people have talked to people about this, but it's about creating habits that are, you're doing small, you're constantly making wins, you're constantly winning, because that stuff compiles, it compounds. Like, I notice even with, like, for example, like, the, like, the following, of, like, like, or, like, on my YouTube, like, I'm starting to see it compound slowly, and it's like, I need to keep instilling these, 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 these little wins, because that's going to add up to big wins over time, and, like, keeping that energy constantly, you know, oh, like, you're not maybe getting the results you want on, you know, uh, you know, sales or views, oh, I, it makes me want to get, no, 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 you keep going, right, keep your habits, keep your wins going, because you had all of these L's that happened, fate dealt you a f crazy amount, but you kept those, like, like, your will was all of these, like, these, and you kept through your will, like, Keep going, you know. Keep keep working, keep working, keep working. And it all amassed and com it compounded, right. and it's like you're saying with all of this, um, you know, it, it's a lot of mass. That's a, that's you know, because by the time you know, 20 years gone by, right? That's a lot of uh, a lot of momentum for sure. And it's and I reflect undeniable. on shit every day, yeah. all day long, like all the things that have happened to me, the choices I've made, the like I reflect tremendously all day every day thinking about everything and and how mm -hmm. grateful i am for it and i think reflection pays a tremendous part in mm -hmm. your life and your growth and yeah. if you're not reflecting on what you've done and what you've achieved and the great moments and the not so great moments and how you overcame thing like are these growing? are dude we're we're equipped with like these tremendous powerful tools all of us without knowing it you know and i've been able I feel like my fucking life has been like a game of Zelda where like I lock unlock these different things and now I'm just I just feel like I've got this toolbox with like all these life skills that I've learned in in some terrible ways but um it just re, it's rewarding me so and so high like you can't even put a price on it you know yeah, absolutely and they're all things that we all have inside of us Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, be the man. Seriously. Like, probably, yeah. Like, my, my, I mean, like I said, this is one of my, probably my favorite episode just in general in terms of the ethos of inspiration, of never giving up, of, you know, the little guy. Thousand, dude. The people I continue to do shit yeah. where people are like, that, that's not possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I keep doing things where people are like, oh, we can't do this or or this isn't possible. Like I hear all these things. I, I read these things and I'm like, dude, it's all possible. It really is. You know what I'm saying? It's it's mm -hmm. it's how you're gonna how you're gonna deal with this mentality and how you address it and then and how you react. Absolutely, absolutely absolutely. And also too, for all those haters out there, how about you stop hating on the outside? Self reflect. For sure. That's how you're gonna make yourself better. Why are you hating? Yeah. What's going exactly. on in your life that that's you don't want to like self-reflect because because at the end of the day, self-reflection is really a great way to grow. And if you're gonna outwardly hate people, you're wasting your time. For sure. Work on yourself. Percent. Work on yourself. Get better and don't ever give up. But thousand percent. Hell yeah. Hell yeah.